Good afternoon friends and welcome to Edusight Live Lectures. Dear friends, today in Botany we will be talking about the concept of uh, mycorrhizal symbiosis. To discuss this topic we have with us our subject expert Dr. Bhupendra Giri. Dr. Giri is assistant professor in department of Botany in Swami Shardharan College, University of Delhi. Without further ado, I would like to welcome sir to our studios and request him to start the lecture. Welcome sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for introduction. So dear students, in your previous classes, you have studied about ecology and ecosystems and the biotic and abiotic components of ecosystem. Today in this lecture, you will learn about that what is symbiosis and what type of symbiotic associations are occurring in nature. You have also studied in previous classes about population interaction. Where you study about different types of interactions. So in today's lecture, you, <coughs> you will be studying about mycorrhizal symbiosis. Let me first explain that what is symbiosis. The term symbiosis comes from two Greek words that mean with and living. Symbiosis is any type of a close and long term biological interaction between two different species. Albert Bernhard Frank in 1877 used the term symbiosis. However, a German mycologist in 1879 defined symbiosis as the living together of unlike organisms. In nature, Three types of symbiotic associations are more, more common and one of them is mutualistic association. Another is commensalistic association and parasitic association. So let me first explain about that what is commensalism. Commensalism is a class of relationship between two different organisms where one organism is benefited but other is not harmed. You can see in this slide that there are some birds and buffalo. These birds are getting benefit from the buffalo because they get their food when the buffalo move around. And in another photograph you can see here that there are epiphytes. Epiphytes are getting support from the other tree plants. However, tree is not affected here while epiphyte is being benefited. And similarly, this fish is also benefited. However, in case of parasitism, the scenario is entirely different. Parasitism, parasitism is a relationship between different species where one species that is known as parasite is benefited at the expense of other species which is known as host plant. So I have placed here some examples that this is a plant which is affected by a parasite. Parasite is getting its food from this plant while plant is totally harmed. And this slide is the example of brood parasitism. In case of the brood parasitism, you have you may have studied that the cuckoo is laying eggs in the nest of the crows. And these eggs are being incubated by crows. While in this photograph you can see here that this plant is again being affected by a number of pests. So in this way parasitism is the phenomena where one species is being benefited while other is, other is harmed. And third one is mutualistic symbiosis. In today's lecture we will learn in detail about mutualistic symbiosis, particularly the mycorrhizal fungi. In this relationship, 
in the mutualistic relationship two organisms of different species work together and both are benefited there are different types of symbi uh, mutualistic symbiotic association one of the example is of lichens this photograph is showing you that this is the lichen and lichen is a mutual association between fungi and algae in this photograph you can see that this is a plant root and the plant root is having a small note like structures which are known as nodules these nodules are formed by a bacterium rhizobium so this is an example of rhizobium legume symbiotic association and the third example i have given is the mycorrhizal fungi what is the mycorrhizal fungi the fungi is colonizing plant root and reaching the cortical cells of the plant where it is making a colonization and giving benefit to the plant i will discuss it in detail in the next few slides so mycorrhizae how this term is related and what is the meaning of mycorrhiza the term mycorrhiza was first coined by ab frank so you can see here that in 1877 ab frank coined the term symbiosis while in 1885 he coined the term mycorrhiza the word mycos means fungus and rhiza means root or fungus root mycorrhiza is a mutual association between soil fungi and land plants where plant gets soil nutrient with the help of this fungus and in exchange the fungus obtains photosynthate from the plant so both are getting benefit with the help of this cartoon i have tried to explain you how they are being benefited from each other and now it is clear that not only the nutrients while the mycorrhizal fungi is helping the plant in several other cases like it is helping the plant to cope up from different type of stresses that we will discuss in the next slides so first let me explain that how many types of mycorrhizal associations are existing in the nature with the help of this photograph i want to explain you that so far seven different types of mycorrhizal fungi are existing in nature for example like ectomycorrhiza or ectomycorrhizal fungi or vascular mycorrhiza orchidoid mycorrhiza ericoid mycorrhiza arbitoid mycorrhiza and monotropoid mycorrhiza and one more mycorrhiza which is not given here is ecto endo mycorrhiza so in this way seven different types of mycorrhizal fungi have been reported in the nature in this photo uh, slide you will see that these different types of mycorrhizal fungi are having different pattern of their colonization of the root and they are also colonizing the different plants i take an example of arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi and the characteristic feature of this mycorrhizal fungi is that they usually have finger like projections which are known as arbuscules or balloon like structures known as vesicles and they their host plants are basically angiosperms and the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi belong to the phylum glomeromycota it is having two different series like arum type and parish type where you can see that in case of arum type series the 
longitudinal intercellular hyphae is occurring in root, while in case of parish type the is spread of uh, it is spreading by intracellular hyphal coils within root. Both whether it is arm type series or parish type series both are colonizing the angiospermic plants and belonging to the phylum glomeromycota. In case of ectomycorrhiza, the ectomycorrhizal fungi form mental sheath and a hertix net that penetrate between root cells. Ectomycorrhizal fungi colonize gymnospermic plants as well as angiospermic plants and they belong to the class Ascomycetes, Basidiomycetes and Gygomycetes. In angiosperms, hertig net is confined to epidermal cells of short roots, whereas in case of gymnosperms, hertig net hyphae penetrate between multiple cortical cell layers of short roots. In, uh, another type of mycorrhiza is ericoid mycorrhiza. Ericoid mycorrhiza forms hyphal coils within very thin roots which are also known as rootlets. Hyphal branches penetrate cortical cells and form intracellular coils. Hertig net forms in intercellular spaces. The members of this mycorrhiza they are colonizing the family Ericaceae and they usually belong to class Basidiomycetes and may also belong to Ascomycetes. Another type of mycorrhizal fungi is monotropoid mycorrhiza or monotropoid mycorrhizal fungi. They colonize a chlorophyllous plants of family monotropacy. Hyphae penetrate epidermal cells forming hostorial packs. Hertix net is absent in mature roots and the host for this mycorrhiza is the members of monotropacy like monotropa and some other plants. And the fungus belong to, belongs to uh, the class Basidiomycetes. Next one is Arbitroid Mycorrhiza. The characteristic feature of Arbitroid Mycorrhizal fungi is that they are having septate hyphae which penetrate epidermal hertig cells and coil inside. They colonize the members of family Ericaceae and belong to class Basidiomycetes. Next mycorrhizal fungi is orchid mycorrhiza. Orchid mycorrhiza hyphal coils penetrate within cortical cells and orchid, orchid mycorrhiza only occurs in case of family Orchidaceae. So by this mycorrhiza the members of family Orchidaceae are colonized and the fungus belong belongs to class Basidiomycetes. So in this lecture out of these different types of mycorrhizal fungi I will more focus on the arbascular mycorrhizal fungi. So we will be having detail of the development of the classification and the significance of this mycorrhizal fungi for the plant. Now let me explain that how the word arbuscular was came. AMF derives its name from Latin word arbusculum, which means little tree. I will show you this type of shape in the next slides. Arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi are obligate symbionts with no confirmed sexual stage. Spores are multinucleate containing thousands of nuclei and exhibit phenomena of heterokaryosis. 
you must be knowing about that what is the heterokaryosis. Hetero means different, other, karyosis, nucleus. So, they are having multi different type of nuclei or they are multinucleate. They lack a uninucleate cell stage in the life cycle. They have two types of mycelium system. One is extra radical mycelium and another is intra radical mycelium. So, let me explain that what is extra radical mycelium and what is intra radical mycelium. The two types of mycelium extra uh, extra radical mycelium is traveling in the soil, it occurs in the soil while the intra radical mycelium is colonizing inside the plant root. So, in this photograph you can see that this is the extra radical mycelium. This extra radical mycelium is penetrating the epidermal cells of plant root and finally, it is reaching the cortical cells where it is colonizing the plant cells. This is the photograph of a little tree means arvascules. So, you can see that this, this is the finger like projections or little tree whatever is it is colonizing very well the cortical cells of the plant root. While the another type of structure that is called vesicles, vesicles are also being present in the cortical region of the plant root. Our vesicles are the functional sites of nutrient exchange, while the vesicles are the storage organ. The, this slide is also showing you that the cortical cells of plant roots are having abundant arvesicules. This is the hyphae of the mycorrhizal fungi and this photograph is showing you that the cortical cell is colonized by arvesicule. In this photograph you can see the arvesicule as well as vesicles and this is the fungal hypha. These are the chlamydospores of mycorrhizal fungi and this photograph shows that how mycorrhizal fungi is making coils inside the plant root. So, you can see here these are the these are the coils which are formed by the mycorrhizal fungi. Now, let me discuss about systematic position of mycorrhizal fungi or arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. The systematic position of mycorrhizal fungi is very well placed. However, before 1974, the most arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi were placed in the genus endogon. In 1974, Two workers, Jardman and Trappi, erected an order endogonales and placed different genera in this order. In 1990, Morton and Benny, they established a new order, Glomales, in the Gygomycota, which comprises of six genera. However, in 2001, Shoveler and his colleagues raised the order glomales to the rank of a phylum glomeromycota. And the phylum glomeromycota was divided into four orders, namely order diversisporales, order glomerales, order archisporales, and para glomerals. Recently in 2011 and 2012, the another workers Ohel and Gota have erected one more order that is Giga Sporel 
to the phylum glomeromycota. In this slide, I have tried to explain you that how the classification has been evolved in case of arvascular mycorrhizal fungi. So, this is the classification which was proposed by German and Trappi in 1974. In 1974 classification, the phylum Zygomycota was established and order endogonales comprised of family endogonaceae. The family endogonaceae possess end endogon, sclerogon, glomus, sclerocystis, oculospora and antrophosphora genera. Later in 1990, the classification which was given by Morton and Benny have shown that the phylum zygomycota is comprising of order endogonal and another order glomal. So, there were these two orders. The order endogonal is having a family endogonacy. This family comprising of genera endogon and sclerogon. On the other hand, order glomales is having family glomacy and under this family there are two genera one is glomus and another is sclerocystis. While there is another family under this order the family is aculosporacy. This family is having two genera one is aculospora and another is antrophospora. In 2001, the classification which was given by Shoveler and his co-workers have shown a new phylum glomeromycota. This phylum is comprising of as I told you earlier the order diversisporales, order glomerales, archaeosporales and paraglomerales. The order diversisporales is comprising of family oculosporacy, family diversisporacy and another family zygosporacy. Whereas, the order glomerales is comprising of family glomacy and order archaeosporales is comprising of archaeosporacy and geosiphonacy. Whereas, the order paraglomerales possesses the family paraglomeracy. The latest classification which was given by Ohel in 2011 and Gota et al. 2012 have shown that there is a phylum glomeromycota and this phylum is comprising of these orders like diversi sporales. Gigasporales and glomerales, archaeosporales and paraglomerales. So, one more order was erected in this classification and the order diversisporales is comprising of family diversisporacy, aculosporacy, saculosporacy Passisporacy, whereas Gigasporales is comprising of family Gigasporacy, Scutulosporacy, Intramatosporacy, Dentiscutacy, and Racocitracy. In case of order Glomerales, the family Anthrophosphoracy and Glomeracy were kept, whereas in the order Archaeosporales the family Ambisporacy, Geosiphonacy and Archaeosporacy were placed. Whereas, the order Paraglomeral is comprising of Paraglomeracy. So, in this way the classification which was given by Ohil and Gota is comprising of several 
fam uh, families and five orders. Now, let me discuss about that how the development of arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi takes place in the plant root. Researchers have defined three different phases for overall development of arbuscular mycorrhizal symbiosis in the plant root. And one of the phase is a symbiotic phase, another phase is pre-symbiotic phase and third phase is the symbiotic phase. So, in these three phases, arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi colonizes the plant root. Let me explain here that before 2005, it was not very well known that what are the chemical components or what are the molecular dialogues which are being communicated between plant and fungi, arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. But later, it was very much became clear that there are certain chemical compounds, signal molecules which are released by fungi as well as plant root and which are helping the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi to colonize the plant root. So, let me explain asymbiotic phase first. In case of the asymbiotic phase, arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi spores germinate in the soil and produce little amount of mycelium. You can see here, this is a fungal spore. This fungal spore is or mycorrhizal fungi spore is being germinated and producing a little of the mycelium. The germinating spores produce diffusible MIC factors. These factors are the fungal signaling molecules. So, you can see in this photograph that the fungal signaling molecule or MIC factor which is lipokaito-oligosaccharide. Germinated AM fungal spores respond to host plant root exudates by switching to an active pre-symbiotic growth phase. Active molecules that cause intense hyphal branching are strigolactones. So, this is this photograph is showing you the structure of strigolactones and strigolactones are the signaling molecules which are responsible for the intense fungal hyphal branching. So, I can summarize it that these are the two components. One is the strigolactones and another is the lipooligosaccharide which are having a very, very important role in the colonization of arbuscular mycorrhiza in the plant root. Thank you.
So, dear student, welcome again and now we will discuss the remaining part of this lecture. The I was talking you about the first phase of mycorrhizal development that is asymbiotic phase. Now, we will discuss the second phase of this development that is known as presymbiotic phase. In the presymbiotic phase, aseptate and cenocytic hyphae which gets developed from germinating spores perceive presence of the host plant by the root exudate. So, it is clear here that plant root is releasing certain chemical compounds that we call root exudate and strigolectones present in the root exudates induce hyphal branching. So, in this photograph you can see here that the spore which was having little mycelium now it is having the branching. I can compare it that you can see here this is the spore which is germinating and now in this slide you can see here that this mycelium is now undergoing branching or hypha is having branch. Same is showing in this photograph also. So, after perceiving plant signals, herbascular mycorrhizal fungi release bioactive molecules like lipokytooligosaccharides, the MIC factor which induce expression of plant gene NENOD11 and SYMRK and CCMK etcetera. The third phase is symbiotic phase. So, you can see here this is a fungal spore and this is the hypha of this spore. The hypha is now undergoing branching. So, several branches of this hyphae are produced and now it is entering the epidermal cell of the plant root. At the epidermal cell of the plant root you can see here there is the formation of a note like structure or apricorium. It is having certain enzymes which are required for the further entry of the fungal hyphae. So, organization of pre penetration apparatus, cell wall degrading hydrolytic enzymes as I told you, membrane depolarization and calcium spiking takes place during this phase. The pre penetration apparatus is a novel cytoskeletal organization which develops in epidermal cells before infection. It has been considered as a key cellular factor in arvascular mycorrhizal infection or colonization. The dichotomously branched arbacicules, so in this slide you can see here that the arbacicules which are dichotomously branched or little tree or finger like projections are produced inside the cortical cells. So, dichotomously branched arbascules are formed in the cortical cell and get separated from the cytoplasm with the help of periarvascular membrane. A type of apoplastic interface you may have studied about symplast and apoplast. So, in this colonization you can see here that a type of apoplastic interface is formed between plant and fungus by peri or vascular membrane. Now, I come to the another wonderful part of this fungus is that what kind of the benefits plant is getting if it is colonized by our vascular mycorrhizal fungi. In this slide, I have summarized that different types of help which are being provided by fungus to the plant is like elevation of salinity stress in the plant, elevation of drought stress in the plant, reduction in the toxicity of heavy metal, influence 
soil carbon sequestration it is a very very important aspect influence soil particle aggregation maintains fertility of the soil beside this it increase plant growth and yield and help the plant to get resistance against plant pathogens i would like to discuss some of the important benefits which are provided by this fungi fungi to the plant and one of them is mineral nutrient absorption several researchers have established that there are certain transporters which are being operated when mycorrhizal fungi is colonizing the plant root or it is established in the plant root so with the help of this diagram you can understand which was which was published in the nature communication in 2010 you can understand that what kind of the transporters are occurring and helping in the transport of mineral nutrients you can see here this is the soil it is soil it is fungus and it is plant the fungus is helping to provide phosphorus to the plant with the help of certain transporters similarly there are the transporters for nitrogen therefore fungus is helping the plant to provide nitrogen on the other hand there are the sucrose and other molecules like glucose fructose so there are certain signals which are yet to be discovered certain transporters which are yet to be discovered they are being operated and fungus is getting carbon from the plant in this photograph you can see that the level of phosphorus is increased as compared to non mycorrhizal plants even under salt stress conditions so the extra radical hyphae of arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi proliferate several meters beyond the nutrient depletion zone and serve as an efficient extension of host root system for absorbing both micro and macro nutrient from the soil with the help of certain transporters which have been discovered i explained you that the fungus is helping to transport the phosphorus nitrogen etc but still there are several things which need to be discovered next benefit is protection against pathogens plants colonized with arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi exhibit increased tolerance against certain root borne diseases like wilt root rot stem and leaf borne diseases in this photograph you can see that the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi is protecting plant from different microbes like fusarium like pythophthora like pythium like meledogyne like pratilench etc so in this way it is proven that arbuscular mycorrhiza help the plant to fight against the pathogen and thereby improve the plant growth in this slide you can understand that how mycorrhizal fungi is helping the plant to cope up or to tolerate the salt stress these are the certain strategies which are being operated by mycorrhizal fungi under stress conditions particularly in this slide i am talking about salt stress conditions under salt stress those plants which are colonized by mycorrhizal fungi have been found to have greater amount of antioxidants and therefore 
they are protected against oxidative damage. Such plants are having increased ratio of magnesium and sodium. You know that magnesium is very very important element. It is a central element of chlorophyll. So, increased magnesium and sodium ratio help in maintaining concentration of chlorophyll in the plant. Therefore, photosynthesis is also being operated very nicely in those plants which are colonized by mycorrhizal fungi. Higher potassium and sodium ratio has been also reported in mycorrhizal plants which help in making ionic balance and better regulation of protein synthesis. Stomatal conductance, transpiration, water absorption, these are the things which are nicely operated in mycorrhizal plants. Therefore, the mycorrhizal plants is increasing its water use efficiency. The accumulation of osmolites is another very very important aspect and accumulation of osmolites increased on AMF colonization in the plant root. In case in if you see the underground part of the plant, there are certain things which are happening nicely in case of the plants which are colonized by mycorrhizal fungi as compared to non-mycorrhizal plants. Water uptake, nutrient uptake and accumulation of osmolites to reduce osmotic potential of cell sap. Next benefit is protection against drought stress. Similar to the salinity stress, the mycorrhizal fungi provide several benefits to host plant under drought stress. I would like to tell you that there are several things which are similar under drought stress conditions as well as salt stress conditions. So, in case of the drought stress, you can see here that mycorrhizal fungi improve tolerance of the plant, altered water relation, altered oxidative stress and increase nitrogen fixation. How? The strategies are that mycorrhizal fungi improve nutrient uptake under drought stress. It increases chlorophyll concentration, it increases photosynthesis and biomass production. Stomatal conductance, transpiration, water absorption and improved hydraulic conductivity under drought stress lead to the altered water relation in the mycorrhizal plant. Moreover, increased antioxidant production under drought stress, decreased lipid peroxidation and less membrane damage and leakage of ions have also been reported under drought stress in case of mycorrhizal plants. Improved nodulation, prevention of nodule senescence are helping in better nitrogen fixation. The another benefit of mycorrhizal fungi is protection against heavy metals. Our vascular mycorrhizal fungi modulate uptake and concentration of heavy metals in plant tissues. Therefore, help the host plant to overcome metal stress. You see here that there are these two different uh, two plants. One is having a very stunted or reduced growth, while other is having better growth. So, the, the plant which is having better growth is colonized by mycorrhizal fungi, while this is a non-mycorrhizal plant means that it is not colonized by mycorrhizal fungi. So, under heavy metal stress, both are growing under heavy metal stress, but this plant 
because it is not colonized by mycorrhizal fungi it is showing lesser growth as compared to this plant which is showing higher growth. So why it is happening you can see here that under heavy metal stress the mycorrhizal fungi is providing several benefits like it is increasing tolerance power of the, of the plant, it is also helping in the sequestration process, passive absorption of heavy metal on hyphae, binding of heavy metal to fungal cell wall component, sequestration of heavy metal to glomelin on hyphae in soil all these things are happening when a plant is colonized by mycorrhizal fungi and growing under heavy metal stress. The another thing is immobilization of heavy metal by cytosol vacuole, activation of metal transporters. Similarly, the decrease in heavy metal availability, qualitative and quantitative changes in exudation changes in soil pH, change in, in rhizospheric microflora. So those plants which are having mycorrhizal fungi, they are having change in the rhizosphere microflora. It has been reported that such plants, I mean mycorrhizal plants, they are having certain beneficial microorganism in the mycorrhizosphere. I would like to tell you that what is mycorrhizosphere. There is a difference between rhizosphere and mycorrhizosphere. Mycorrhizosphere is influenced by the mycorrhiza. So, and another thing is the compensation of root exudate. The root exudate is also modified. It is having certain chemical compounds which are beneficial for the plant growth. So, these are the benefits which are being provided by mycorrhizal fungi that is why it has been reported that under those plants which are having mycorrhizal colonization are having are showing better performance under different types of abiotic stresses whether it is salt stress drought stress or heavy metal stress now i come to the last part of this lecture that is the summary. In the summary, we can understand that mycorrhizal symbiosis is one of the most ancient relationship. I would like to tell you here that it has been predicted that before 450, milli, uh, 450 million years before the plants would have been colonized by mycorrhizal fungi. So you can imagine how long this association is. So it is a relationship between plant and filamentous fungi colonizing more than 90 percent of land plants. So it is again a very very significant thing that more than 90 percent of mycorrhizal uh, plants are colonized by mycorrhizal fungi. Only a few families are left because of certain reasons. Our vascular mycorrhizal fungi is the most common symbiotic associations among terrestrial plants, whether it is ectomycorrhiza, arbitroid mycorrhiza, orchid mycorrhiza or any other kind of the association or any other symbiotic association like rhizobium legume association or lichens, AMF Arvascular mycorrhizal fungi is the most common symbiotic association among terrestrial plants. Recently, arvascular mycorrhizal fungi have been placed in a separate phylum that is glomeromycota. So it is a very, very new development in the classification of mycorrhizal fungi that a separate phylum has been erected. Arvascular mycorrhizal fungi hyphae penetrate epidermal cells reaching root cortex. In the root cortex it develops finger like projections which are known as arbacicules. They may also develop 
balloon like structures which are known as vesicles i would like also tell you that the earlier name of this fungi was vem v a m v for vesicular a for orbicular m for mycorrhiza so earlier it was known as vesicular orbicular mycorrhizal fungi but nowadays it is known as orbicular mycorrhizal fungi why it is why the name has been changed the name has been changed because it was reported that orbicules are uniformly they are common in all types of orbicular mycorrhizal fungi but vesicles are absent in certain groups therefore a common name orbicular mycorrhizal fungi was given or orbicular mycorrhiza was given that's why nowadays we are seeing it am fungi or orbicular mycorrhiza the presence of orbicules provide a large surface for nutrient exchange so as i earlier told you that orbicules are the functional sites of nutrient exchange and uh, between the host and the invading fungus they uh, it is happening in addition to improved plant nutrient uptake mycorrhizal fungi play significant role in alleviation of salt stress drought stress and heavy metal stresses besides this phytoremediation and protection against plant diseases are also reported in case of the plants which are colonized by mycorrhizal fungi dear students mycorrhizal fungi positively influence the concentration of photosynthetic pigments and you know that what are these photosynthetic pigments as you know that chlorophyll concentration is very very important for better photosynthesis is if chlorophyll is degraded it is not in adequate concentration the photosynthetic rate and capacity of plant is decreased so that is why mycorrhizal fungi is playing very very important role in photo in in photosynthesis plant photosynthesis mycorrhizal fungi maintain ionic balance as i told you that it is having a balance of magnesium sodium ratio potassium sodium ratio and several other ionic concentration is maintained by this fungi it increases accumulation of antioxidants and osmoprotectants antioxidants are very very important to protect a plant when it is under stress conditions so on the basis of all these things i would like to suggest that the exploitation of mycorrhizal fungi may be a potential approach to improve growth and development of plants under biotic and abiotic stresses at the last but not least i would like to suggest you certain research papers which may be very useful for your further studies like one of the paper which was published in current in the journal current opinion in plant biology it was uh, it was published in 2011 dating in the dark how roots respond to fungal signals to establish orbicular mycorrhizal fungi very good paper another paper that you can refer and you can read is the mechanisms underlying beneficial plant fungus interactions in mycorrhizal symbiosis this paper was published in nature communication in 2010 and one more paper which is uh, recently published it was published in 2013 orbicular mycorrhiza approaches for biotic uh, approaches for abiotic stress tolerance in crop plants for sustainable agriculture 
another review paper which was published in another journal that is Annals of Botany. The title of the paper is Arbuscular Mycorrhiza in Alleviation of Salt Stress. And another paper which is related to mineral nutrition uptake is Influence of Arbuscular Mycorrhizal Fungi and sal Salinity on Growth, Biomass and Mineral Nutrition of Acacia auricoliformis. You can read these papers for your further knowledge. Thank you very much. Dear friends, on that note, we would like to thank Dr. Giri for coming to our show and delivering this wonderful lecture. And thank you, dear friends, for watching our show. Stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you.